So let's go straight into you and telling me when you were a boy, how did you pick hops? You talked about them growing on poles. That's right. We didn't have the work in those days. We actually they used to uh, use hash poles and they used to make a pilot hole in the ground with an iron bar to, to put the poles in. And also they used to run two strings up the sides of the poles at the same time. That was for the op vines to go up. Did you say you put them across... Describe how the poles were taken down and then laid across the crib. That's right. Well, you had a, what they call a pole puller. They used to call a pole up. You wanted the pole up and they used to come and bring the, pull the pole up, physically pull the pole up and carry it across and put it across your crib for you to pick the pole. And of course, when you finished that one, you called for another one. Tell us about the time um, you, you did something with the poles and the farmers weren't very happy. Oh, that's another story. What actually was, obviously we didn't have any means of, of eating up food and that at lunchtime, so we had to light a fire. And my grandmother used to soak a piece of rag in paraffin, wrap it in several sheets of paper, and was to light the fire. But of course, to use fuel on the fire, we, we, we used to cut the farmer's poles up. And he used to get quite irate about it, as you can imagine, because they were quite expensive. That was the means of cooking our lunch, cooking bacon or boiling the kettle. On. You, you did another job with the poles, didn't you? Something about boiling them? Sorry? Boiling poles. Oh, that was when the wire copiers came in. Took over from the poles, yes. What they used to do, you'd have a, a, like a furnace out in the open filled with tar or pitch and used to put a fire underneath. And the idea was to boil the, the, the bottom of the poles to preserve them before you put them in the ground. You can imagine it was a dirty, dangerous job, but that's, that's what they used to do. You were telling me that they used to do something to the string. Oh yes, that was another thing we used to do. We used to put the, the well, it was the rolls of um, coconut string, which is quite rough. I used to put them in a, in, a, in a maybe a stream or in a brook to soak the, the rolls of the string before you actually put them up. And of course, the idea was if you strung it with a with a wet wire with a wet string, I beg your pardon, when it when it dried out, it shrunk, so it, it tightened up. Houses. The what? The houses in the hot. Oh yes, you, to get everyone, make sure they had a fair allocation of hops. You used to put the crib in what they call a house in the hop yard. That consisted of roughly about twenty roots of hops each side of the crib. And what, once those were picked, they used to call the pole puller and they used to come along, and 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 they physically move the crib into the next house. Hop kilns? Yeah. Yeah, what, what they actually did, that once the hops were bushelled, they used to take them back to the hop kilns and uh, take them up. And the, the hop kiln consisted of a, a small room with a slatted floor. And on top of this floor was coconut matting. They used to spread the hops onto the matting, into the hop kilns, and about, maybe about two foot deep, to, ready to be dried. And uh, in the floor down below, directly below the, the kiln, they used to have a fire, just light a fire. And they used to burn smokeless fuel on this fire, mostly anthracite or coke. And that was the idea, so the heat to go up to dry the hops in the upper floor. But also, they used to put in there to kill a lot of bacteria in the hops nut, they used to set fire to bar sulfur. You were saying the sulfur could have a terrible effect. Can you? Sorry? You were saying that the sulfur... sulfur oh, absolutely. Yeah, you can imagine the fumes from the sulphur. You try and breathe those in, it would stop your breath. And of course, the, you can imagine in those days, we used to have a lot of people come from Dudley and different parts of the country. And the girls used to, used to come into the kiln in the evening. And of course, we used to put the sulphur on. As you can imagine, they'd start to cough and choke. And of course, the first thing they'd make for would be towards the door. Well, that would be the worst place they could go to because all the draft going to the door, that's where all the fumes were going out. If you stood by the fire, you didn't get any fumes. Memories. It's coming back, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, it's yes. Coming back more and more. But 
But you're also saying when you were a little boy, you used to sneak into the kiln to sleep. Oh, absolutely, yes. Can you tell us about that? <coughs> well, once we... Right, well, right next door where we, where we were actually living at Dollinswick, where they actually dried the hops, we used to sneak in there at night and, and, and sleep alongside the fire, alongside the fire, and it was really warm, you can imagine, can't you? Can you tell us now that you used to work at Wiggins and used to do shifts, but in your spare time, you also strung? Oh, yes. Can you tell us that story? Yes, of course I can. And another thing we used to do, we used to do a lot of hop stringing. I've done a lot of hop stringing. And we used to do it by the acre. But it was not an acre of land, it was a hop acre. And a hop acre consisted of a hundred roots. So you were paid by the acre. Okay, we're no, late, later on in years, I, I worked for Wiggins in Hereford. I was working shifts. But in between times, I used to go and help the farmers out with the hop stringing. And that was quite a, a, a hard job, as you can imagine. You had to carry a large ball of string on your back, and also you had a hop stringer, which you, you actually made these hop stringers yourself. Out of uh, handlebars of a bicycle, believe it or not, you cut the, uh, the, the actual um, bent part of the handlebar out and cut a piece out of it. That was the idea, and stick it onto a long pole. And then the idea was to run the string through. Because obviously you were, you were up reaching up about what twelve foot up to hook it up, and and to, to string the hops. What about do you know when the bush came round? Tell us. Oh, about. the bush, absolutely. Yeah, well, w what it was, he used to pick hops up until around about maybe three, four o'clock in the afternoon. Then you hear the cry, the farmer coming down, clear them up. And the idea was you get all the leaves and make sure your hops are nice and clean when he came along to do the bushling. He used to come along with this great big basket, it was called a bushel, because obviously you were picking the hops and you were paid by the bushel. I think it was about a shilling a bushel in those days. And he used to come and measure how many bushels you'd picked. And then they used to put them into a sack. And the, the pole puller was always used to have the job then uh, of carrying the sacks. It used to be onto the trailer or horse and cart, wherever they got available, and take them back to the hop kilns. So once the hops were taken back to the hop kilns and dried, they were taken out of the kiln and spread onto the granary floor to cool off. And in the middle of the floor was a round hole. And above this was a big press. I used to put a hop, what they call a big strong sack, it was called a hop pocket. That was fixed down into the hole. Then the hops then were pushed by hand into the hole and they brought this big press down. And they were pressed, 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 pressed in there till they were very, very tight. And once this was done, they used to take the pocket out down in the lower floor and sew it up. And then the next thing job was to get the stencils out. They used to put the name of the farmer and the date and everything onto the hot buckets. We've been to a farm where he still does that. Do you know? Oh, um, of course they do, yes. Yes, Simon Parker, yeah. Yes, of course they do. That's, yeah. still, done. That's still happening. Of course it is, yes. What might be really useful, Archie, if you can give us some sort of idea of where you were working, where you were doing this as a child, and when. Could you do that for us? Yes, I would. First of all, I started off, the first, my first experience of hopping was with Mr. Capper at Lower Rope at Linswick. That's when they had the hopping machine. And my job then was to, was to be on the, what they sat on the bagger. Of course, the machine used to come along, and, and, and as the socks, all the ops came up, the, the, the conveyor belts, they used to go into a, a bagger and you got to take a, bag all the hops up and take them off the bagging machine. Do you want Arch to say when that was? That was back in 1954, believe it or not. And then, of course, I moved from there then to Mr. Boker to Felton Court. And I spent, I think, about six years working there with the hops. And they, of course, they had the, everyone used to have the in those days with the rough hop picking machine. Of course, it would taken over from the hand picking, then it was all gone then, of course. You used to have a, uh, you'd go down into the hop yards and uh, with a tractor and a specially made trailer we used to have, especially for this. And you'd have two men on, on the trailer and they'd be pulling the binds down and loading the hops before they were taken back and taken back into the machine. Then they, they were hooked onto the machine and then, of course, the machine took over then. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think we shouldn't record stories like this? 
Well, you should. Yeah, or maybe you might not think so. Do you? No, I, I think it's very important because I think um, people, the youngsters coming along today, just to be aware of how things were. I mean, there's too much, in my opinion, it in the background, and, and they're not aware of what's going on or where it, what things come from. I mean, a lot of children don't even know where what hops are. Never mind the, uh, and also they obviously know where the beer comes from. Then, of course.